Welcome back to the Upper Tier Podcast, the football podcast we bring you each and every week on the Dynamo Podcast Network. Head over to YouTube, smash that subscribe and bell notification button. Audio versions of our show are also available on Anchor. Head over there, Spotify, Podbean, wherever you pick up your audio shows, you'll find us. We're also on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. If you want to contact the show or you feel like you want to feature on one of our shows, hit us up there, drop us a DM or a PM, and uh, we'll respond. And joining me today for our FA Cup preview um, is joining me is Alex from the blue side of London. We were supposed to have Wayne on, but I think he got caught up and he got delayed. So I'll do my best to represent City as best I can um, <laughs> during these hard times after coming off a bad Champions League loss. Um, there you go. Um, See, Liverpool out of Europe, it's like, oh, well, let me just have route around my wardrobe from my City jersey. You can get the Pep Guardiola flag behind you. Yeah, well, look, I, I, I do my best to be impartial as I can on the show, you know. It's like um, when I saw my mate who had a Manchester City raincoat. I was like, "What do you have that for?" He says, "I just for a rainy day." Yeah, it was a, it was um, it was um, yeah, it was um, it was on discount on Sports Direct for a fiver, so I picked it up, you know, that kind of way. Yeah, plus delivery. Absolutely. Yeah, plus delivery. Yeah, um, although delivery was probably free on the Man City raincoat. Fair. Um, yeah, when when we came on and I saw that uh, Wayne wasn't here, I was like, "This is going to be an extremely." Uh, Bias review. It'd be like Chelsea win it all. Good night, folks. I, I'm I'm okay <laughs> with that. I'm okay. Bias is good if people don't show up, you know. Um, what you're thinking? I mean, I suppose I wanted to kick it off. I mean, knowing what we know now in terms of both of you is into the semi final at this stage of the Champions League and semi final coming up the weekend. Mm. How do you feel about the FA Cup? I know it's another trophy, and I know it's one of the big three or big four or whatever way you want to look at it. Um, but is it a priority for Chelsea? I think that the FA Cup is... See, the FA Cup's a strange one. It is, as we've all known, the oldest cup competition in the world. It is a competition with a lot of history behind it. You know, they say everybody wants to win the cup. I mean, years and years ago, I'm sure when, you know, you were younger watching football, it was as big as the league to win. Like, you won the FA Cup, was on par with the league. But mm. I think over the last 20 years or so, actually, to be honest, I'd say if we go back, yeah, probably to 20 years ago, remember Ferguson actually said uh, he had United... Not not competing in the FA Cup. He said, no, I want us to go out and compete in the Club World Cup and just he took them out and competing in the FA Cup altogether. Yeah. I think it was kind of deteriorating because of the influence of the Champions League. But when you saw that with Ferguson, I think that really kind of, uh, that really showed people that it wasn't high in the priority of, you know, the top clubs like that. And yeah, look, I just think over the years with the revenue and the TV rights and stuff, there's just much more emphasis on the likes of, you know, your Champions League, even trying to get into the Europa League and, you know, trying to win the Premier League. And, See, it's a weird because I like the FA Cup. Like, I got my little FA Cup winners post from 2007 behind me here. So, it is a nice thing to win, but like, it's not kind of like, you know, say, for example, if Chelsea finish fifth or sixth and we win the FA Cup, like, I wouldn't be like, oh, you know, great season. Although we finished fifth or sixth, we won the cup. Like, you'd be looking going, you know, that's not a good season. Yeah, I think it's 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 very hard. I mean, obviously, Chelsea have a decent squad as well there, you know, mm-hmm. of players, but it, it's very hard to sort of prioritising one over the other because you know inevitably you could crash out to Real Madrid in the semi-final um, yeah. and then imagine you'd prioritise that and sort of field it a weaker team in the, the FA Cup semi-final and sort of mm-hmm. thrown it away say um, you might regret it and plus there's all to play for in the top four race at the moment so um, Chelsea are fighting on a number of fronts at the moment I know Kovacic is out for the match and um, picked up an injury there um, we haven't seen the pressers yet um, but it'll be interesting to see what comes mm. out of that. And obviously, Kante came on, but he's only coming back from an injury himself as well. So he was lacking a bit of sort of match sharpness and stuff like that. Again, not a bad replacement at all when you think about it. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's like, you know, you get the feeling when you get to this stage and it's a semi final, then you kind of like you, the romance of the cup, if you like, builds. Yeah. You know what I mean? As opposed to like your first round match against, say, Swindon or Blackpool or whatever it is, you know what I mean. <laughs> um, but I, th- I think, um, I think this is time for Tuchel to to be really, really careful because he he's on the cusp of yeah. something really great. Imagine coming in halfway through a season and you win a Champions League and an FA Cup and Roberto you get a team team in the top four. Yeah, like I mean, you're you're talking this is this is legendary stuff, you know, in the yeah. first six months of your career there, you know. Um, and hopefully they don't, they wouldn't do to Tuchel then what they did to Roberto De Matteo oh, following Jesus, that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you 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 think it's still a priority on Chelsea calendar at the moment and still something that they they're gonna go yeah. for. 
Yeah, I, I think, look, I think although it's not, you know, the main priority for a club, like, you even see the Carabao Cup, like, you know, it, it's nice to win a trophy. Like, it's nice to look back and be like, you know, God, well, we got some silverware that season. Although it's not the be-on and end-all, I would still consider it a poor season to spend the 200 million to finish fifth or sixth and get the FA Cup. Um, yeah. It's just coming out of time where I suppose there's a lot of, it's really, I suppose, the business end of the season. This is when all the games are important. And we play City on Saturday, then we play against Brighton on Tuesday at the Bridge. But then the following weekend, we're away to West Ham. And then we have the first leg away to Real. So you're kind of looking, going, okay, out of all of those games, the FA Cup is the one that if it was like, okay, you have to lose one of those games, which ones you want to lose? I'd say, look, FA Cup, that, that's yeah. the one I'm willing to lose out of those four. Yeah, because the West Ham game now will be massive looking yes. at the league table. Yes. You know? That's a massive game. Um, looking at the form at the moment, Man City, two defeats in their past 37 games. I mean, what, <laughs> what, a, what a run they're on. Now, I preface that by the Leeds defeat. Mm. But again, I mean, Pep tinkered with the team and did a few, made a few crazy decisions. And, and I mean, it was a 10-man Leeds, but it just goes to show you, like, if you're, if you're up for it and you get at them, you, you know, you you know, magic can happen sometimes, you know. Yeah. Um, not dissimilar to Chelsea in terms of Tuchel coming in. 12 wins out of 18. Um, very impressive. Yeah, it's, it's been a good record. Only, Yeah, and only the, the one defeat now against West Brom. I know apart from that, apart from that crazy, crazy game against West Brom, we haven't seen it more than one goal in the game under Tuchel as well. So, I, I mean... It's going to be an interesting game because had it been a few months ago, like when we had Lampard, although I saw the poster up there, like I said, you don't have to take it down yet. Um, if someone had told me in December, like when we were losing all those games, you know, you're going to be in the semi-final of the Champions League, semi-final of the Cup, fighting for the top four, I'd have said no way. But see, it's a strange one for Tuchel because a few people I've seen have kind of written this game off saying, well, you know, City are unstoppable and this and that. And City are great, but I don't know. It's just for me for all the kind of big tests that Tuchel has had, he's passed them. Like, you know, we had Atletico in the Champions League. He made it look easy. We played yourselves away. We played uh, Tottenham away. You know, beat Tottenham and Liverpool away from home. You know, played the likes of United and stuff like that where, you know, unbeaten there too. So, I'm kind of looking going, I don't know, because as Leeds showed, City can be got at. And I know United uh, showed and they beat them at the Etihad, City can be got at. So, I don't know. It all depends, I suppose, what kind of city shows up. I know they will be focused and go for this quadruple, but I think we can definitely, but we can definitely beat them if we do play our game right on the day. Yeah, I know. Speaking, I know. Speaking to Wayne prior to the Champions League match, he was very concerned insofar as he said they could all crumbling, come crumbling down and they they could win, end up winning nothing. You know, yeah. even United, they did the comeback against United back when. And they could, he said that he could see it happening again, but in reverse. Jesus. Um, but I said to him, I said, I wouldn't be worrying about that. I even told him last night, I said, look, you'll, you'll do the business against Dortmund. Don't worry about that. And yeah. then he, he texted me, he messed me after the game saying, yeah, you were spot on. They said, look, you're, you're way too talented to be doing something like that against Dortmund. And, and I mean, you have the experience now, you know, to go all the way. It's about time that City actually stepped up to that next level when it comes to those semifinals and finals in Europe, you know? Mm. Um, but then again, I mean, they have a huge task on their hands now against PSG. Yes. Um, that's going to be massive. And I'd imagine PSG at that stage will have a number of their key players back. I mean, if you look at the PSG team the other night, it was only like they were obviously missing four or five players there, you know, if they're starting players. Mm. Um, so they'll be way more stronger when um, City roll into town, you know? Um, yes. The defeat of West Brom, I mean, looking back on it, I think it was it was such a strange game. But to me, it was mm. like, you know, it was probably the wake-up call maybe that Chelsea needed because they'd been coasting along um, and beating teams, but not beating teams impressively. Just, we yes. said it before, workmanship, if you like. one nils, two ones, just coasting along, getting the job done, game by game. The, the grinding out that you expect from a solid Chelsea team, you know. Um, so when West Brom came along, that must have been like an eye opener for Tuchel to go, wait, hang on a minute here, and um, let's refocus and reset and let's go again. And um, that's why I think Chelsea are going to be very strong now in the run in both in Europe, um, mm. and also in the FA Cup and also in um, in the league. You know, I think that 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 West Brom defeat, um, where it might have seemed bad at the time, could be the the catalyst to push on for the rest of the season. Yeah, like, I call it, like, kind of a free game because I was like, oh, geez, like, you know, this is, you know, nobody was expecting that. I think if you even asked the most diehard West Brom fans, you think you went 5-2 at the bridge, nobody would have backed that result. But, yeah, it was kind of a strange one because I remember before that game, 
I think in the international break, I think a couple of players have done interviews and they've done, you know, I'm sure you know as a Liverpool fan, the dreaded interview when your players come out to the media and say, oh yeah, like we feel we can win any game. We feel like we can't be beaten. You're like, well, guess what's going to happen next time you play? Um, I think it was a combination of things. I think it was, you know, we got fairly comfortable. I think the international break for two weeks kind of threw us in a sense that a lot of our players had gone off to play international football, whereas the West Brom players, not so many of theirs, had gone off to play international football. Plus, I also say about Chelsea is that from all the years I've seen us, Apart from that one night in Barcelona, we cannot play with 10 men. As soon as we get up to 10 men, the whole team seems to lose its shape. But, yeah. you know, take another away from West Brom. I'm not trying to excuse yeah. it and say, oh, because it isn't that. Like, West Brom, by far, are better than us on the day. They absolutely played us off the park. But, yeah, look, the main thing was what happened after that. Like, if we had have done that and then, you know, not gotten the result against Porto in the next game, it would have been like, well, Jesus, like, have the wheels come off? But uh, since then, 2 0 away to Porto, well, away to Porto. Um, we had the uh, we played very well. I thought we played our best game of the season against Crystal Palace there at the weekend. And then after that, like I know we lost to Porto on Tuesday night, but I mean that was that game wasn't about winning. That was just about you know not conceding two goals. Yeah, so it's, um, we bounced back well anyway. I think. Yeah, it's the clever management there from Tuchel, isn't it? Not to push the players too hard, but just go in again a workmanship performance. It doesn't matter if you conceded a goal, so long as you're solid and you know what you're doing. And let's be honest. Look at the timing of conceding the goal. Like if that had been in the first half, then there might have been concerned. But to concede the goal right at the death, I mean, it was, yeah. there was never really an issue there. Um, in terms of City, I mean, it's probably obvious where you see, but where do you see the danger coming from? Obviously, the Bruyne, Foden. Mm. I mean, if these players play, of course, you know what I mean? It's hard to know with Pep getting to this stage of the Champions League, what he's going to feel, you know? I suppose it's one of those when you look at City. It's kind of it's one of those teams similar to yourselves last season in the league. I look at City and I kind of go, "Where's the weakness?" Like I don't see where the kind of weak point that we can exploit is. Um, like the whole team for you know one to eleven is incredible. I think obviously the danger is going to be. See, I'm intrigued to see what Pep does up front. He's kind of uh, made a season as he's not playing an out and out striker. He seems to be going back to his false nine that he was using when he was at Barcelona. So. I know the preferred front three is usually, you know, the likes of Sterling, Foden, De Bruyne, because they're going to play up there, and you have Maras on the wing. Nice. So, yeah, look, it's going to be very difficult trying to face that. But I think that Tuchel has made us a lot more kind of solid defensively with the three at the back and the wing back. So, I think personally, it's going to be an interesting one. I think that with their two centre halves, if you look at the likes of Ruben Diaz, if you look at the likes of John Stones, I think you're going to need to have a Giroud up there to try and compete with them in the air because although Werner is quick and can run behind, they're both very quick as well. And I think what Havers is the false nine. He is a big guy he gets around, but I think that you're going to need Giroud with that link-up play with a Pulisic or with a Werner, I think would be the best way to crack them. I know it's an old school kind of thing. People go to, you know, the big striker with the fast striker, but, you know, sometimes it just works. you got to go back to... Uh, you got to go back to the basics. And I know modern teams love this whole playoff from the back. I think if we're doing that against City with their pressing game, it's going to be suicide. I think that we saw that at the bridge earlier in the season. Sometimes just, you know, knock it long, let your real knock it down, go from there, get the ball at that end of the pitch and see what happens. And yeah. I think that's going to be, I think we're going to have to, uh, I think we're going to have to suffer a lot in this game. I think we're going to, City are going to have a lot of the ball against us. Yeah, I think the key when you're playing City is really try and bypass that midfield, isn't it? The likes yes. of Rodri, Fernandinho, they're so strong like in there, you know what I mean? Real yeah. battlers, you know? And um, that's what uh, I was going to say, that's what Kovacic would have been great for, because like, Kovacic, I think, is a fantastic player for picking the ball up and then driving at the midfield and driving into the defence. So, Jorginho doesn't really give you that. He's much more of a metronome, as they call him. You know, he'll get the ball and kind of spread it where it needs to be. And Kante, he's not fully match fit. He's still coming back. So, I think the midfield battle is going to be very interesting. Uh, if they play three in midfield against the Kante and uh, Jorginho, I think we could we could find that quite difficult. But, again, it, just, it depends what Pep's lineup is. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what 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 you're making at this stage again of Timo Werner? I mean, um, it's it's nearly difficult for Tuchel nearly to to give him a start and spot nearly, isn't it? Because yeah. but then what do you do? Do you crush his confidence or do you stick with him till it happens? Or you know, it's one of those again. Like I mean, it's a scenario that I'm trying to give the answers to. But I mean, how many times have we seen this happen with strikers at Chelsea? I mean, you go back years ago, you go back to even when Roman first came in, you know, you had Mutu, you had Kesman, you had Shevchenko, you had Falco, you had Murata, you had Torres, now you've got Werner. So, I mean, like, these are all, you know, big names in the game of football. These are all players that were scoring lots of goals and coming in and expected to do the business. So, it's strange what we're referring to because he started off so well. 
Connor reminds me a bit of him, right? He started off so well and he was scoring for fun. And I was thinking, geez, you know, we really have that circle that we need it. But I don't know. I, I think he's a player. You could see his confidence is way down. Like I remember we played in the cup early in the season. I think it was when we were playing Morecambe, I think, or Luton, one of the games early in the cup. I can't remember against who, but he had a penalty. He won the penalty and was like, oh, you know, team, I'll get yourself a penalty here. He couldn't even score the penalty against League One opposition. So yeah. you're kind of looking going, man. It's, it's sad to see. And I think... I think the media doesn't help. Like, you know, how often do you hear a player like that? And it's like, you know, oh, you know, this many games without a goal and this and that. And I know they say, look, it doesn't bother me, but it has to bother you somewhere. Like, I mean, when you're seeing that left, right and centre, it has to bother you. And he's 24, 25. He's still a young guy as well. So I think a lot of pressure has been put on him. And it is sad to see kind of how low his confidence is. It really is because, like, there's been a few games where he's played well. I know there was three games there earlier. I think it was in March where he was a man of the match. He was playing quite well, setting up lots of chances, running down the channels. But as a striker, you're judged on goals. Yeah. yeah. Well, it must have been... Um, you must have been very happy to see Havertz bag his goal there the, the other week or whatever Took it, it well. And also Pulisic back to form. Yes. Um, with the two goals I think he got. Wasn't it two goals he bagged? Yeah, it was two goals against Palace. And I know last season when we came back after the break and we had uh, we got top four in the end our two biggest players for that run in last season were Pulisic and Giroud mm. so Pulisic was outstanding I thought he was the best player when the league started back last season and then Giroud you know scored a lot of big goals for us so you know I, I wouldn't be against going back to the Old and trust the combination against City this weekend yeah and it wasn't it wasn't only even the goals it's not like they were like you know knock-ins I mean it was it was the manner in which he took the goals and um, the skill of them and stuff like that you know it was like a player really back confident yeah. in his game you know um, which was interesting to see um, at the back for City Diaz is there probably being one of the top central defenders if you like in Europe and in the league this year um, he's been an outstanding boy for a lad I think he's 23 years of age or something like that such a young player as yeah. well for that position what have you made of him this season? I think he's been excellent because uh, last season the big kind of Achilles here which City was at their defence like they were conceding a lot of goals they shouldn't have been conceding. I think they were playing with Otamendi and Fernandinho at the back for large portion last season. John Stones wasn't even trusted. But not this guy's come in, Ruben Diaz. I think he's been absolutely outstanding. I agree with you. I think he has been the best defender in the league this season. And um, yeah, he's really changed your team around. It almost reminds me of when you guys signed Van Dyke. It's amazing what getting that top center half and just to keep things calm at the back can do. And yeah, look, he's completely transformed. They look a completely different team with him at the back. Yeah, it reminds me what what they went through with Fernandinho at the back reminds me of us this season what we've had to do with Fabinho. Yeah, um, and it's only in recent times he's gone back into his natural position, you know. Um, so yeah, I mean, what you're thinking on how it plays out? I mean, give me a prediction here. Give me a few goal scores. Is this going to be a chess <laughs> match? Is this going to be a, a goal scoring feast? What is it? You know what we'll do? We'll go. I'll go with a hope one. I'll go two one Chelsea because you're always going to back your team with these predictions. I got two one Chelsea. I think it'll be a fairly tight game. I hope it'll be a fairly tight game. It just depends if City come up and try and bloody blitz us. <laughs> yeah, it's. I'd like to think two one. I'd like to think that we're going to be solid at the back, but you have to fancy City to score a goal. Like you have to fancy City to score a goal in any game they play. I think, and I'll go with a very hopeful prediction with my heart, not with my head. I'll go with my heart and say two one Chelsea and. Uh, Hopefully, hopefully into the FA Cup semi final. Hopefully into the FA Cup final. Hopefully against Southampton. We'll see. Maybe Southampton doing a business against Leicester sets us up nicely. Imagine. Yeah. Um, I suppose if you're calling a goal for City, it'd have to be Kevin De Bruyne, wouldn't it? Ah, uh, he loves a goal <laughs> against us. Uh, Flair that just uh, Flair that got away and loves a goal against us. And uh, I think if we're going to get a goal ourselves, I'll go. I don't know. Giroud in the mouth for us. Hopefully Giroud gets a game, gets a goal. I was listening to a story there the other day. We have a transfer show coming up tomorrow, but I was listening to a story there the other day, a little whisper that Chelsea might have an interest in Sergio Aguero. Mm. What's your thinking on that? The ser- to prospect of signing Sergio Aguero, my reaction to it is the exact same reaction I had to sign of Thiago Silva, in the sense that when we signed Silva, I says, okay, I'm excited, but I'd be a lot more excited if it was five years ago. I think Aguero is a fantastic player. You know, he's proven at City he'll get you goals. Um, I'm just worried about his um, his injuries lately. Like, I mean, he's a top, top, top striker to have at the club. Mm-hmm. You know, one of the most lethal finishers we've ever seen in the Premier League. I know he could probably help on the training ground with the likes of a Werner or someone like that, or even a Tammy Abraham if he sticks around to try and help them with his finishing. But I don't know. I think if he is available on a free, 
And if he is available, you know, relatively okay wages, and he's happy to not be the main striker at the club, I say, you know, why not? On his day, he's a absolutely top class striker, and so having someone with that experience in the fold can only help. Because I know, although he hasn't played every game this season, Silva, I think at the back, his experience and what he's taught the other lads has really helped. Yeah, I, I think he's a he's a tantalizing prospect to have on any bench to spring yeah. from the bench, isn't he? And I'm I'm even thinking when you look at Chelsea there this season and you look at the opportunities that Timo Werner's had, if Sergio Aguero was on the end of them, good lord, how many goals would he have this season? You know? Exactly. Um I'll give a little prediction. I'm thinking three one Chelsea. Really? Uh, okay. Yeah, and I'm thinking, like you said earlier, this is tailor made for Giroud to be that big annoyance up there again. I love when they play that way because yeah, I I just love Olivier Giroud. You know, I just think he's a great footballer. I do know? too. Yeah, um, but I'm thinking three um, one. He's but, also uh, behind Mbappe and Haaland, top scorer in the Champions League, third top scorer. So yeah, yeah which is yeah mm. unbelievable. Um, but as always, it's been a pleasure, Alex, having you on. Um, we'll send out the bounty hunters to track Wayne down. <laughs> <laughs> um, I thought I was sure he'd be on today after that big win last night, but um, may- maybe he's nursing a hangover or something from celebrating or something like that. Who knows? Maybe so. Maybe uh, maybe he's uh, freaking out the prospect of uh, semi final the FA Cup and potentially a Champions League final against Chelsea. Yeah, absolutely. Listen, before we head off, tell everyone about the chats. The chats, yes, my um. <laughs> My show, it's coming up tonight. There you go. There's my little backdrop for the awesome. show later. It's a chat show where I talk to different performers, uh, different, you know, uh, comedians, actors, musicians, basically anybody involved in the entertainment industry. Um, I talk to them for an hour, three interviews a week from 7 to 8. And yeah, we got a show coming up tonight at 7 p.m. I'm not sure when this airs, but, you know, if you're watching this before Thursday at 7 p.m., check out the show after you've uh, checked out the Dynamo podcast. And uh, yeah, love to see you there. We're doing quite well. I think we're at about 1,100 followers now. And episode 24 tonight so almost half a year worth of content which i'm quite happy about awesome and do you give away any guests at this stage or is it always kind of a surprise or? give away any guests yes yes i have a uh, three comedians on tonight i have a uh, couple comedians from Ireland and a comedian from america so uh international the show is gone it's, it's pretty good fun nice 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 well as always as we say head over to the dynamo podcast network absolutely volley that subscribe and bell notification button also over on Anchor if you want the audio version of the show. This has been your Chelsea Man City FA Cup semi-final look, at, look ahead. Alex, appreciate you coming on, my man. Yeah, no bother, man. Thanks for having me. It's always uh, it's always nice to talk about Chelsea in a semi-final as a competition. It's been a while. Brilliant. Talk <laughs> to you again soon, Alex. Cheers, bud. Yeah, man. Bye-bye.